Hello again. Um, in this section, we'll be looking at identifying ions. In particular, we will identify cations. And um, in the next section, we'll do identifying anions. So we're doing positive ions today. There are six um, ions that we wish to consider today. And they are copper 2 plus. Um, sorry, there are seven. There's ammonium, copper 2 plus, iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus, zinc 2 plus, aluminum 3 plus, and calcium 2 plus. So we'll be looking in turn at each of these seven ions individually, um, and then we will draw a flow chart to put them all together. So the two reagents that we'll need to test for the presence of these cations are the sodium hydroxide aqueous, a strong alkali, and we'll also be using ammonia solution, which you might um, sometimes see as being written as NH4OH uh, aqueous, sorry, and these, these are equivalent to each other. But the thing to note is that both of these are alkali, the sodium hydroxide being a strong alkali and the ammonia being a weak alkali. And since they are both alkali, they will both furnish OH minus and that will be crucial to our testing for these um, cations because uh, as you may recall from the video on soluble and insoluble ions, a lot of hydroxide ions are not soluble except for barium hydroxide, some group 1 hydroxides, uh, all the group 1 hydroxides and the ammonium hydroxides. So those, this will be key to helping us identify the ions. So let's jump right in and the first thing we'll look at is how to test for ammonium ions. So what you will do is um, you will take the suspected solution, the solution in which you suspect contains ammonium ions, and you'll add sodium hydroxide to it. So you take your suspected solution, and to it you add some aqueous sodium hydroxide, which should be cold. And what you do then is you heat this thing on a Bunsen burner and a gas is released. Now this gas, if the ammonium ion is present, is the ammonia gas and this gas will turn red litmus blue. Okay, so that's how you test for um, ammonium. You just add some sodium hydroxide, and if the gas release turns litmus blue, you know that ammonium ion is present. An equation for this is the ammonium will react with the hydroxide, aqueous of course, to form ammonia gas, I beg your pardon, ammonia gas, and also some liquid water. So it is this ammonia gas that turns litmus blue, and that's how you test for ammonium. Okay, let's look at the next one, and the next one you're going to look at is copper. So what you do is, again, you take your solution suspected of containing copper 2 plus and you add some sodium hydroxide, the strong alkali sodium hydroxide. Now what you'll see is you'll see a blue gelatinous precipitate forming on the inside. So you have a blue gelatinous precipitate and that indicates the presence of copper 2 plus. If you wish to confirm, hold on, let me write the equation for this first. 
So the aqueous copper ions will react with two aqueous hydroxide ions to form the COOH2 hydroxide complex, which happens to be solid. Now, if you wish to confirm the presence of copper 2 plus, you will then add some weak alkali, the ammonia, remember we have two reagents to test for, we have the weak and the strong, and what you'll find is that it will now dissolve again to form a amine complex. So you will form something like that, which is soluble and is dark blue. So my test tube is going to look dark blue, the dark blue solution inside, because of this new amine complex being formed when I added the um, ammonia. So next up, let's test for iron 2 plus. look at Fe2 plus just like before we will add some strong alkali sodium hydroxide and what you should see is you should see some blue precipitate sorry some green precipitate forming inside so you see green precipitate which will darken in air and what's happening here is that the ion 2 plus is reacting with the hydroxide ions that were furnished by the sodium hydroxide to form this iron hydroxide solid precipitate complex. And that's what gives it the green color. And it's worth noting here that adding excess sodium hydroxide has no effect. And adding ammonia has no effect on this green precipitate so it just remain there. Next let's take a look at iron 3 plus so just like before add sodium hydroxide aqueous and this time what you'll see is a brownish precipitate form in the uh, in the test tube So um, red blood cells, for example, contain iron 3 plus, so that's why they're reddish brown. And also rust um, is reddish brown because it contains iron 3 plus. And what's happening here is, of course, this guy reacting with three hydroxide ions to give me, um, sorry, give me F this hydroxide solid complex that's brown and again it does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide just like iron 2 and does not dissolve in ammonia if I were to pour it into here this brown precipitate will just remain there. Next up um, is zinc so once again the zinc goes the suspected solution goes in the test tube and we add aqueous sodium hydroxide and that's going to result in a white precipitate a gelatinous white precipitate so what happened was that the zinc ions reacted with two aqueous hydroxide ions to form a solid zinc hydroxide complex and this is white now we can further do further tests to distinguish this from calcium and aluminum by adding excess sodium hydroxide or ammonia now in the presence of ammonia what results is an amine complex 
like so, pushing two hydroxides out. And this is soluble. So the zinc hydroxide is soluble in ammonia, and it is also soluble in excess uh, sodium hydroxide because it will further form a different complex, this time with four hydroxides attached to zinc, which um, is also soluble. So zinc is soluble in both excess sodium hydroxide as well as ammonia. Finally, we'll take a look at calcium. So once again, put calcium in here. I'll put our solution in here and add some sodium hydroxide into the test tube. And if calcium is present, what you'll see is a white pre gelatinous precipitate. Well, in fact, it could be calcium, zinc, or aluminum, but then we'll do further tests to distinguish it from the other two. So the calcium would have reacted with the sodium hydroxide to form calcium hydroxide solid precipitate which is white in color and now if we try to add ammonia or excess sodium hydroxide what we see is no solution um, no reaction meaning the white precipitate remains even in the presence of excess sodium hydroxide or ammonia so this this is this this is the distinguishing feature of calcium ions. The calcium hydroxide that's formed in presence of sodium hydroxide will not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide or ammonia. So that concludes our um, reactions for the seven cations that um, I wanted to look at. And in the next video, we'll put it all together in the flow chart to um, get a you know bird's eye view of how we can actually identify um, these this, uh, these seven cations in the laboratory. So stay tuned. Um, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and um, leave a comment below. And I hope to see you next time.